The following is a lecture given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on September 8, 1973, in Stockholm, Sweden. Sri Bhagavan Uvaj. Bhagavan means the Supreme Being that is also dictionary world. And the, I consulted the Oxford Dictionary. God. God means the Supreme Being. And the Supreme Being, that is also stated in the Dictionary, uh, the greatest authority. So God means the greatest authority Supreme, Supreme Being. Uh, we have got little idea of Supreme. Suppose when we go to work in our office, the proprietor of the establishment or the managing director of the establishment, uh, he is called the Supreme. We have got experience of the Supreme Court. Uh, in India we have got Supreme Court. If there is any judgment which is not accepted by the uh, litigant, he can go to the Supreme Court and in the judgment given in the Supreme Court is final. Uh, no more any appeal, uh, that is fine. Supreme means that, fine. So Bhagavan Uvasa, Bhagavan means the Supreme Being. Uh, we are all beings, we are also living entities. Similarly, Bhagavan or God, He is also a living entity. Uh, as living entity, we are the same, uh, but he is the supreme living entity. Uh, no more greater than him. Uh, here we can distinguish, I am here, you may be greater than me, and another person may be greater than you, another person may be greater than him. In this way, you go on searching, greater, 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 greater. And when you come to a person, nobody is greater than him, that is God. Nowadays it has become a fashion. So many gods, especially they come to your country, Western country. But God can be plural number. God is always singular. One. If God is plural number, then that is not God. That plural number God may be the living entities. We are living entities. And God is also living entity, but the supreme living entity. That is the difference. It is basic statement. Uh, nitya nityana chetana chetanana eka jo bhavanam vidhati kamaan. Uh, description of God. He is nitya. Nitya means eternal. And we living entity, we are also eternal. Na hannate hannamane sarire. We, at the present moment, in the material condition, we are changing body. That change of body is called death. Actually, the living entity within the body, he has no death, no birth. Na jayate nam vyate vatadasi. This description we are not in the basic literature. So, 
God is also Nitya, eternal. We are also eternal. God is also cognizant and we are also cognizant. We have got knowledge. And God has got knowledge. The difference is that I have got knowledge limited within the limit of this body. I have no knowledge what is going on in your body. Neither you know what is going on in my body. Therefore, we are individual. But God is on the individual. He is spread everywhere. That is God. Annantarastam paramanuchayantarastam. God is within this universe, within yourself, within myself, within the atom. Annantarastam paraman, paraman means atom. He is within the atom also. But I, you, we are limited within this body. We are limited. I cannot say that I understand what is going on in your body, pains and pleasure. That I cannot say. But I can understand pains and pleasure of my body. So, the quality is the same. God has knowledge. You, you, me, we have got knowledge. But our knowledge is limited. God's knowledge is unlimited. But knowledge is there, cognition. Therefore, the Veda says, Nitya Nityana Chetana Chetanana He is the supreme eternal amongst all other eternals. He is the supreme cognizant uh, amongst all other cognizants. This is the difference. So Bhagavan means the supreme opulent. Bhagavan means opulence. Just like riches, uh, uh, reputation, strength, beauty, knowledge, renunciation, these are called opulences. Uh, so every one of us has got little opulences. I have got also little money, you have got also little money. But I cannot claim, neither you can claim, that you are the proprietor of all the riches of the world or the universe. That you cannot claim. Nobody can claim. But God can claim. That is the defiance. God can claim, as He claims, we understand from the Bhagavad Gita, Bhoktaram Jagudavasam Sarvalogu Maheshwaram Sridam Sarvabhutanam Gyatamam Shanti Vichyati God says that I am the enjoyer of everything. We are acting in this material world to enjoy something. We are working day and night to get some fruit of our labor and enjoy it. Uh, everyone, either he is doing business or he is a professional man or he is a worker or anything he is, he is working very hard day and night, to enjoy something. So, but we cannot claim that we can enjoy everything in this world, although you have got the desire, but limited power to enjoy. The unlimited enjoyer is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Just like we want to enjoy life, family life. We marry one wife. Uh, or in some countries, more than one wife, two, three, four. But when Krishna married, he married 16,108 uh, wives. So, uh, and 16,000 wives were given 16,000 palaces. And each wife got ten children. And Krishna also expanded himself into sixteen thousand one hundred and eight four. 
That is God. For us it is very difficult to maintain even one wife at the present moment. This is the difference. Just try to understand what is the meaning of this word bhagavan. Bhagavan means opulence. Uh, this is one of the opulences, richness. Uh, when Krishna was present on this planet, he was so rich that he could maintain sixteen thousand queens in sixteen thousand very costly palaces made of marble, the furnitures made of ivory, and the uh, beds were made of silk, and each and every room was decorated with that with jewels, glittering jewels, so that at night there was no need of electricity or that. Uh, these descriptions are there uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam of Krishna's palace, Krishna's sixteen thousand wives, Krishna's uh, expansion into sixteen thousand forms. Uh, this is Bhagavan. Uh, Bhagavan means unlimitedly potential. That is Bhagavan. Uh, so here in this uh, chapter, we are trying to understand what is Bhagavan. Uh, this Krishna consciousness movement means to try to understand what is Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of God. This is our endeavor. Uh, <coughs> it is very difficult to understand Bhagavan, but there is a process. If you adopt that process, you can understand God or Bhagavan. That process is being described by the Supreme Lord Himself, Bhagavan, Bhagavan was. Uh, what is that process? Maya Saktamana Partha Jugam Junjana Madasraya Asamsam Samagrama Jatha Gyasasi Tatsino. My dear Rajan, now I shall explain to you. We hear with attention. Tatsino. What is that? Mayasakta Manasta. You have to increase your attachment for me. Mayasakta. Mayasakta. May means and to me. And asakti means attachment. Mayasakta Mana. Mind has to be trained up in such a way that you increase your attachment for God or Krishna. When you speak Krishna, you understand God. <coughs> Krishna is one of the names of God. Uh, there are many millions of names of which Krishna is the chief, because this word Krishna means all attract, because he is fully opulent. Just like he is in this material world. If one man is very rich, he is attracted. He draws attention of the people in general. If he is very powerful, he draws attention. If he is very reputed, famous, he draws attention. If he is very wise, learned, he draws attention. But Krishna has got all these things in fullness. Therefore he draws attention of everyone. Therefore his name is Krishna. This Krishna may mean all attractive. He has got all the attractive features. Therefore he is called Krishna. So Krishna says, just try to increase your attachment for me. Practice this. It is not difficult. Just like we have got attachment for something here in this material world, Somebody attached to do business, somebody attached to uh, woman, somebody attached to man, somebody attached to riches, somebody attached to art, somebody attached to so many things. There are many subject matters of attachment. So attachment we have got, that we cannot deny, everyone. We have got some attachment for something. That attachment should be transferred for Krishna. 
That is called Krishna consciousness. We are attached to something with consciousness, not blindly. So we have got the consciousness when we turn our attachment or train ourselves to increase our attachment for Krishna, that is called Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga. We have heard the name of Yoga. Yoga means connecting link. So, if you practice this Bhakti Yoga, then gradually you increase your attachment for Krishna. That is it. It is stated also in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhaktyamam avijanati jaman jasyami taktaka. Uh, if you practice bhakti yoga, that is called bhaktya, uh, then you can understand me. Uh, not otherwise. There are different types of yoga system. Bhakti yoga, gyanu yoga, karma yoga, hato yoga, uh, uh, dhyana yoga, so many yogas. But the bhakti yoga is the supermost. That is stated in the last chapter. I am reading before you the seventh chapter. At the end of the sixth chapter, Krishna says, Yoginamati sarvesam madgata antaratmana sadhyavan bhajati yogam sami yukta tamomataha. Yoginamati sarvesam. One who practices yoga system. He is called Jogi. So Krishna says, Jogi Namati Sarvesam. Of all the yogis, uh, I have already stated there are different kinds of yogis. Of all the yogis, Jogi Namati Sarvesam. Sarvesam means of all. Yogi. Uh, Madhagata Antaratmana. Uh, one who is thinking of me within himself. Uh, we can think of Krishna. We have Krishna's form, Krishna uh, deity we worship. So if we engage ourselves in the worship of the deity, the form of Krishna, which is non different from Krishna, or in the absence of deity, if we chant the holy name of Krishna, that is also Krishna. Of the Naktar Namana. Krishna is absolute, therefore there is no difference between him and his name. There is no difference between him and his form. There is no difference between him and his picture. There is no difference between him and his topics. Anything about Krishna is Krishna. This is called absolute knowledge. So either you chant, the Krishna's name, or you worship Krishna's form, everything is Krishna. Uh, so there are different forms of devotional science. Savanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasivanam, Archanam, Bandhanam, Dasham, Shaktam, Atam, Nivedanam. He who just hear about Krishna, that hearing is also Krishna. Just like just now we are trying to hear about Krishna. So that hearing is also Krishna. Uh, these boys and girls are chanting. That chanting is also Krishna. Savanam, Kirtana. Uh, then Smarana. Uh, when you chant of Krishna, if you remember the picture of Krishna, that is also Krishna. Or you see the picture of Krishna, that is also Krishna. You see the deity of Krishna, that is Krishna. You learn something about Krishna, that is also Krishna. So anyway, Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasivanam Archanam Bandanam Dasam Sakham Atma Nivedanam. Any of the nine items, if you accept, you immediately contact Krishna. Either you accept all the nine items, or eight, or seven, or six, or five, or four, or three, or two, at least one, if you rigidly take and uh, suppose this chanting, it does not cost anything. Uh, we are chanting all over the world. Anyone can uh, chant by hearing us. 
It does not cost you. And if you chant, there is no loss on your part. So, but if you do, then immediately you contact Krishna. That is very good. Ah. Immediately. Because Krishna's name and Krishna is not avinnatyadnamanam. These are the description of the Vedic details. Avinnatyadnamanam. Ah. Nama Chinta Mani Krishna. Krishna's name is Chinta Mani. Chinta Mani means spiritual. Chinta Mani, Prakara Sadhana Su, Kalpa Vikala Khaprati Su. These are the Vedic descriptions. Where Krishna leaves, the place is described. Chinta Mani, Prakara Sadhana Su, Kalpa Vikala Khaprati Su, Suravi Ravipala Yantam. So now, the holy name of Krishna is also Chintamani, spiritual. Uh, Nama Chintamani, Krishna, he is the same Krishna person. Nama Chintamani, Krishna. Uh, Chaitanya. Chaitanya means not dead, but living entity. Uh, you can get the same benefit uh, by chanting name as you get a personality is talking with Krishna. That is also possible. Uh, but this will be gradually realized. Uh, Nama Chintamani Krishna. Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Rasa Vigraha means uh, the pleasure, reservoir of all pleasure. As, as you chant the name of Hare Krishna, so gradually you release some transcendental pleasure. Just like these boys and girls while chanting, they are dancing in joyfulness. Uh, nobody could follow them. But they are not crazy fellows that they are chanting. Actually they are getting some pleasure, transcendental pleasure. Therefore they are dancing. Uh, it is not that the dog dances. No. It is really spiritual dance. The soul's dance. So, therefore he is called Rasavigraha, dissolver of all pleasure. Nama Chintamani Krishna, Chintana Rasavigraha, Purna, complete, not that uh, one person less than Krishna, no, ten percent Krishna, uh, complete, Purna, Purna means complete. Purna Shuddha. Shuddha means purified. There is contamination in the material. Uh, material, any name you chant, because it is materially contaminated, you cannot continue for very long. This is another experience. But this chanting of Hare Krishna mantra, if you go on chanting for twenty-four hours, you will never feel fatigue. That is the test. The God chant, these boys can chant twenty-four hours without eating anything, without drinking water. Uh, it is so nice. Uh, because it is complete spiritual. Suddha. Suddha means pure, not materially contaminated. Uh, material pleasure, any pleasure. The highest pleasure in the material world is sex. But you cannot enjoy it twenty-four hours. That is not possible. You can enjoy it for two minutes, that's all. Uh, even if you are forced to enjoy, you reject it. No, no more. Uh, that is material. But spiritual means uh, there is no end. You can enjoy perpetually, twenty-four hours. That is spiritual nature. brahma sokham anantam Anantam, anantam means unending. So, in order to enjoy the spiritual pleasure, uh, you have to practice some tapasya, austerity. Because you are spiritual, every one of us is spiritual. Aham Brahmasana. We are not this material body. You change. It is for certain years. Again you change another body, another body. Uh, this changing of body is going on. Because we are seeking material pleasure. So, 
God is giving us different types of body for enjoying different types of material pleasure. But if you want to enjoy the spiritual pleasure, then you do not require uh, to change body. That is the mission of Krishna consciousness. That every one of you want pleasure. But that pleasure in the material world you cannot enjoy perpetually. But if you purify yourself of this material contamination, if you do not accept this material body again and you remain in your spiritual body, then you enjoy transcendental bliss, eternal. So this human form of life is meant for that purpose. Uh, lower than the human form of life, cats and dogs. They cannot understand what is spiritual pleasure. That is not possible. But in the human form of life, you can understand what is spirit and what is matter and what is spiritual pleasure and what is material pleasure. These distinctions we can make. Uh, that much consciousness is developed in the human form of life. But if we misuse this developed consciousness for material pleasure, then we are missing the opportunity. This is Krishna consciousness movement. Our Krishna consciousness movement is that you have got this human form of body. Don't miss the opportunity. Uh, that you can, if you properly utilize, if you train yourself, you can be transferred to the platform of eternal spiritual beliefs. This is Krishna consciousness. So, you can become Krishna conscious in any circumstances. There is no limitation that you have to become Krishna conscious under this condition, that condition. The condition will be enunciated later on. First of all, try to become Krishna conscious ah, that uh, at least you drink water and so many times in a day, you just try to think that the taste of the water is Krishna. That is the beginning of your Krishna yoga system. And then if you chant Hare Krishna, Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Then you become gradually the greatest yogi without becoming very learned scholar, without becoming Vedantist, without becoming religionist. Simply by this process you try to practice and your life will be perfect. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.
जमुना तीर बनसारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्लभ दिली बरधारी गोपी जन बल्लभ दिली बरधारी यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यमुन तीर बनचारी यमुन तीर जय राधा माधव बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जाय हम स्वाद परमंश परिभ्रा जगाचा जस्त करे से समाद अपनी धाम दिसर सिरी गुशानी गुखवा की जाय अंत पूरी बुशन में की जाय नावाचा जस्त हरिदास साख की जाय प्रेम से कहो सी किस नुचाई करने पर उन्नतान अनुसी अद्भुत दरार दर्शवार आदि बहुत वक्त में जाय सिसी राधा कृष्ण को बगना साम कुंड राधा कुंड ग्रीव की जाए जमुना वहाँ की जाए दूर द्वार का धाम की जाए सांवित भक्तविंद की जाए और ग्लोरी सुजेस में जाए और ग्लोरी सुजेस में थैंक यू वेरी मच